دفع اہم ماز امام شافی امام علی ابن حنبل امام ابو حنیفہ امام ملک اور دی گریٹ فو ایم ماز سیٹ دیٹ ایف یو فائن اینی اف می فتوہ ویچ گوز اگنیس اللہ اینیز رسول تھو می فتوہ ان دی وال و ایدہ صح الحدیث فہو مذہبی اور ایف یو فائن دی حدیث ویچ ایس آفنٹک دن ذات ایس ریلی می مذہب And unfortunately and sadly in many, many circles, especially amongst the youngsters, there are so many discussions, so many arguments, so many debates, so many confusions. Many people, subhanAllah, they think that as long as you are following a Sahih narration, that is okay. But the Prophet didn't say, follow Sahih Hadith. He said, follow Sunnah. And the Sunnah, ordinary person can't come up with it. And this is the responsibility of the fuqaha. So when you follow the fuqaha who have been followed for almost 12 centuries, Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, like I said, up to today even, more than half the ummah follows Hanfi fiqh. A large portion of the ummah follows Imam Shafi. A large chunk again follows Imam, Imam Malik, rahimahullah. And perhaps from all the fuqaha, uh, the least... Is, is Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahimahullah his followers are mainly in Saudi Arabia or used to be nowadays there's a general trend to abolish they think even taqlid or following the aima is a bidah is a shirk that is not the case my dear brothers that is not the case if you're following a mushtaid scholar and one other thing ulama have stated the wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these fuqaha has preserved all acceptable variations in opinion as there are some variations in opinion which were unacceptable. All the Aima have rejected them. Whatever has been taken up by Imam Abu Hanifa or Imam Shafi or Imam Malik or Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, Allah wanted all possibilities, all, all acceptable variations to remain in the Ummah. So they have remained. And anything which hasn't been taken up by the Fuqaha, even though it might be in Sahih Hadith, then it shows if it wasn't taken up by the aima, then it is matruk. It is matruk. It was abolished or not, not kept up by the, the Prophet wasallam or the Sahaba. Otherwise, the Sahaba would have kept up and it would have been taken up by the ummah. So what has been abolished and didn't exist for 12 centuries and now if people want to follow it, some people say, some people say, people like Imam Abu Hanifa, they say, my mother is Sahih Hadith. If you bring any Sahih Hadith and it goes against what I have said, throw what I have said on the wall and follow Sahih Hadith. Have you heard this? Everybody, uh, most people have heard this. And so what they say, look, this is says in Bukhari, Sahih Hadith, so you have to throw out what Abu Hanifa said, but I have yet. And if anybody, if anybody can bring me one issue, one issue, in which they can prove that there is a sahih, undisputed hadith which goes against a qawl of Abu Hanifa rahimahullah and which doesn't have a sahih hadith to back it up. I, I would love dearly to someone to prove even a single issue, single issue which Imam Abu Hanifa has spoken and he goes against a sahih hadith which is unanimously, universally accepted and for which there is no other contradiction then I would love them to prove it but I don't think anyone will be able to prove a single hadith issue a fatwa of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, or Imam Shafi or Imam Malik or Ahmad bin Hanbal rahimahullah, for that argument which goes is against a hadith which is undisputed against a hadith which is undisputed if it appears to go against a hadith which is Sahih, then I can guarantee you there is another Sahih Hadith elsewhere to support what the Imams have said. Or if there is a call of any of the Imams and it appears to contradict a Sahih Hadith, then there is another Sahih Hadith to contradict that Hadith somewhere else. And ordinary people don't know that. But by making such claims, and many scholars, Dr. Zakir Naik, Abdul Rahim Green, Abu Amina Bilal Phillips, and by making such claims, and I have yet to hear, I've heard, I've seen many clips, Zakir Naik, Bilal Phillips, Abu Usama, Abdul Rahim Green, making all these claims that Imam Abu Hanifa said, if you see a Sahih Hadith, which goes against what I've said, throw my car on the wall, follow this Sahih Hadith. But no one as yet has presented a single example of such an amal, which either Imam Abu Hanifa has, what he said, 
goes against a sahih hadith and there is no other sahih hadith to contradict it. So when people make such claims on the internet or all over the world, what they are really saying, don't follow Abu Hanifa, don't follow Shafi, don't follow Imam Malik, don't follow Imam Muhammad bin Hanbal, follow sahih hadith only. But oh, you don't know whether that hadith is really sahih. You don't know whether that hadith is, is mansukh or not. And even if it is classified as sahih, it's not been classified as sahih by Rasulullah. It's been classified as sahih by other muhaddisun. So if you're going to follow another man's opinion at the end of the day, then what's wrong with following the opinion of a man whose opinion has already been followed over for 12 centuries? So we can't get away from the fact that all of us, all of us, are blind followers and we have no choice but to be blind followers because if somebody says this is sahih hadith how are you going to guarantee hundred percent it is sahih it's not the prophet didn't say it another man said it and imam bukhari rahimahullah for example in his compilation there are eight nine chains imam bukhari didn't meet them all he only had to base his judgment on what he heard hearsay so you have to place your trust blindly on Imam Abu Hanifa or Albani or other Muhaddisun or Bin Baz that what he is saying is Sahih. And is it really Sahih? You can argue all night and all day till Qiyamah and you will go round and round. We've got no choice but to place blind trust. So if you're going to place our trust somewhere and trust someone, yes, then why not follow the people who have been followed for 12 centuries? And by following them, what's happened? It's produced great muhaddisun, great fuqaha, great ulama, and people have managed and lived together. And mashallah, deen has prospered. But now, in this time and age, we see so much fitna. Fitna on the name of Quran and Hadith.